So first of all, I would like to thank uh, all for giving this opportunity to sneak us in for a short talk. And uh, since this is our first uh, uh, HPC user forum, uh, I would like to thank you all for uh, listening to us. So uh, we are from NEC, and uh, we are here today to uh, basically first introduce uh, NEC vector processor. So uh, we have all been talking about CPUs, GPUs, and also quantum computers. And so uh, we have tried some different approach towards uh, HPC, uh, for which we have been working over for more than 35 years. So uh, the name you, uh, you would hear is SX Aurora Subasa. So again, Aurora is there, not to confuse with the uh, current system. Uh, so I would call it the vector engine. So uh, before I move forward, so what is a vector engine? Uh, is like we have he heard about vectors in CPUs and GPUs everywhere. So what vector engine is, is a, a massive form of C SIMD. So it's a massive SIMD which we are introducing today. So by massive SIMD, I mean is that uh, if you see this graph of compute performance and memory performance, so vector engines uh, would lie somewhere on the top left area. So uh, although the multiprocessors or the GPUs have been concentrating towards the compute performance and also gener generically uh, like CPUs for uh, providing uh, the generic perform performance to the applications, but we've been concentrating over the top left. Now, although you can solve this problem by scaling up uh, the CPUs or scaling up the GPUs, but uh, our, in our approach, we are trying to start from the core. So more and more bandwidth and memory closer to the core and pure vector cores is what, what is our strength. So our target is to have high bytes per flop. So going forward, we are looking after pure vector big FMAs uh, with, uh, uh, big, uh, with large number of pipes to have uh, massive data processing and data parallelism and uh, uh, which makes us a little different from uh, what GPUs and CPUs. And uh, that doesn't mean that uh, 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 we, uh, uh, we are trying to compete, but it does mean that there's an area which can be addressed with uh, uh, such a processor. So having said that, yes, uh, so we, uh, we come in the, into the PCIe form factor and uh, this vector processor has eight cores per, uh, uh, per processor per chip. And uh, we have uh, 2.15 uh, teraflops of double precision performance. And uh, we have the massive high a memory bandwidth of 1.2 terabytes, along with 48 gigabytes on chip. Now this allows us, uh, uh, so, uh, well, uh, we, you can compare it uh, with GPUs and CPUs in terms of numbers, but the architecture is a pure vector. By pure vector, I mean is that uh, we have one thread per core, so and uh, so, so there is no hyperthreading. This uh, this is a pure vector supplying machine. So if you look at it, so this is a single core, what it looks like, and uh, we uh, and we have the 48 gigabytes of HPM2 which is connected to the cache with 1.2 terabytes. And then we have the cache connected to the uh, registers with three terabytes per second. Now these registers, vector registers, are uh, having each 256 elements, eight bytes, and 64 registers. And these are directly supplied to the 32 vector pipelines. Now this, what does this mean is that you can have 256 elements of double precision multiplied together in a single instruction, and uh, which is way much more than uh, the typical SIMDs which, can, which, which are offered currently in the market. Now, uh, having said that, our architecture is totally a, uh, meant for higher data processing. So wherever there's a huge data uh, processing requirement on the core, definitely these, uh, this clean, pure vector architecture can help you out. Now, In order to do so, we need to support you uh, with the existing infrastructure. So because uh, the, in the vectors have been out of the market since 2008. And uh, uh, earlier systems were pure vectors. 
and uh, people were quite used to uh, exploring uh, the vector kind of coding guidelines. But later, uh, uh, then 2008, uh, GPUs and CPUs took over, and there is a, a different coding style or way of interpreting architectures have been found, and uh, people have been slightly away from the hardware. So. At the same, so that makes our coding styles a little different, but that doesn't mean that uh, you need to get penalized for that. Uh, so we have uh, uh, our uh, stack, which is quite mature. So you, the maturity is like we support C, C++ uh, compiler uh, and Fortran, uh, in which you can reuse your existing uh, uh, old vector codes or uh, the new ones. And we support OpenMP and MPI. A, and also, uh, we support uh, uh, fully tuned uh, vector libraries, uh, which are uh, the numerical scientific libraries, uh, which can uh, help you to uh, basically quickly accelerate your work. And in addition, we have our tools for performance analyzer tools, uh, which are uh, intriguing enough. Uh, we are building on that uh, uh, so that you can have the same visualization as you have uh, with the rest of the architectures uh, or the processors of us. At the same time, uh, in order to grow our e ecosystem, we are providing open source uh, uh, stuff as well, So, the, which involves training and uh, various uh, materials uh, for you to tune your vector codes or codes for vectors. At the same time, uh, we respect that all applications cannot be solved by a single hardware. So heterogeneity is uh, something which is uh, uh, we are totally in sync. And uh, as, as I had shown you in the graph, that uh, each architecture deserves its own area in, in the graph between compute performance and memory performance. So I think uh, now having said that, uh, we have open sourced our middleware, which is the VEOS, in which uh, uh, you can uh, try things like hybrid MPI. You can basically communicate uh, uh, with the, the rest of the architecture seamlessly. And uh, I'll be covering a slide for that. And uh, in which uh, we, you can have a system in which you can have a CPU, GPU, and a vector engine on a single chassis and uh, basically explore a whole lot of application space. And uh, uh, we see that uh, uh, not only traditional HPC, but uh, even machine learning is now is not uh, only just machine learning, it's high performance data analytics. So I think uh, for that, we also provide uh, uh, vector uh, special accelerated libraries for vector engine. And uh, uh, also we have seen our work uh, on performance in terms of deep learning. So having said that, uh, uh, wherever the amount of data is increasing, our vector processor's performance increases exponentially. So that's the key to basically to look forward in the vector processors that we are offering. In terms of uh, using it, uh, uh, it's uh, fairly easy to use. You can use your existing pro programs as is. You do not have to change anything and uh, uh, the compiler diagnostic messages and the format list will actually give you quite intuitive methods to basically a, uh, tune your vector code. So yes, so you start with a simple code and then you can have your own, we have our own pragmas and vectors uh, uh, in, our, in, uh, in order to uh, basically uh, use the performance to the fullest and then you can also go to the advanced levels. But uh, as you see, the architecture it is fairly easy to parallelize and visualize the architecture while you code. So it's easy to actually program these uh, uh, codes uh, uh, and get the full performance uh, from the vectors. And uh, the next, I was talking about the heterogeneity factor. So yes, so we, in the VEOS or the middleware, we support different models. So the model on the uh, left is the uh, VE offload model or OS offload. So in this, you can put the entire application onto the vector engine. So there is no communication with the CPU and there is no PCIe bottleneck. Whereas this is, these are meant for, the leftmost size is meant for the pure vector application, which are 100% vectorized. But as you go from left to right, you see there is a mix of scalars and also the GPU-centric codes as well. So we respect that. So you can have a VH call and a VEO as well, in which you can either ways transfer the applications between the CPU, GPUs, and the vector engine. 
So uh, this uh, kind of approach basically allows us to have uh, one point uh, which is very important is that if there is massive data processing required, then I think uh, uh, the other architectures which are fairly trying to access, uh, assess this or uh, uh, basically address this problem uh, is uh, having uh, some flavor of SIMD uh, at uh, fairly different levels, uh, especially in CPU and GPUs. But using pure vectors can actually, uh, you can explode, uh, explode that performance uh, to the fullest. And that's where we come in. So, so I'd like to talk about some successes, which we have been, uh, we introduced Vector Engine uh, in 2018, and we have actually achieved uh, some successes about uh, uh, in massive data processing. So first success in the weather. So uh, we clinched a deal with DWD Germany, uh, where we were able to uh, uh, put a massive system of a uh, uh, couple of thousands or more than that actually. Nodes and uh, it's uh, uh, it's around 50 million euro and what and this mod uh, the reason why they have chosen this is because they have a meso scale uh, weather prediction um, uh, for short term and they think that SX Aurora or Subasa or Vector Engine is good for that. Next is for material science, so similar to the particle accelerator uh, which I happened to see yesterday at Argon, it was an honor. So uh, in Japan as well, so high energy accelerator research organization has accepted to use uh, uh, vector engine or SX or Subasa for their uh, 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 for their material science projects, and uh, they think uh, that the amount of data required, uh, processing requ required vector engine can actually solve that. And uh, in in the U.S., uh, we are happy to announce uh, our. Um, the partnership with HPE and uh, uh, HPE and uh, NEC are coming together to basically uh, provide uh, these vector engine cards uh, in, in their chassis. Uh, uh, so they are DL380s and Apollos, 6500. And uh, HPC, uh, for HPC, HPE is the number one player and we are happy to be engaged with them and yeah, introduce uh, these model form factors uh, uh, for the market. And yes, for the starters, uh, we have also uh, uh, partnered with the Colfax, and we are providing this one vector engine unit, A100 model. Uh, and uh, uh, this can be used uh, as a desk side model. And uh, this is a very unique solution because uh, we are offering a huge uh, uh, data processing capability into a desktop. So to conclude, uh, uh, so there are three parts to it. So, uh, so vec as I said, vectors were there uh, in uh, solving HPC problems uh, uh, till 2008. But uh, there, uh, so, and th they were the solutions uh, for big, big problems. So for example, Earth Simulator of NEC in 2002, 2004 was the top uh, supercomputer. And it was meant for simulating uh, big problems. And uh, it was easy to code in vectors uh, back then if we see, it was, it was simple architecture to explore. Uh, and till today vectors uh, are a, a significant part of, of, of every CPU or GPU or any architecture, processor architecture. But the key learning was that the, maintaining a pure vector machine is too heavy because it requires a lot of memory bandwidth and memory closer to the CPU. So we need to learn, so we adaptive, adapted and we evolved. And uh, we also understood the market requirement that people, everybody needs a supercomputing by their desk. So learning all these things, we adapted and evolved and we changed for good. So it's like we were dinosaurs, we were almost extinct, but eventually we have evolved into birds. So yeah, so we would like to say that, uh, please uh, come and try our system and uh, 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 let's, uh, let's see uh, how your application can address this massive data processing problem through vectors, pure vectors. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. What's the wattage of the car? What's the? What's the wattage of the car? So it's under 300 watts. Under, th under 300 watts. Yes. 
So that was a challenge actually. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe you said this in your talk earlier, and I missed it. How do, uh, uh, what's the big differ differentiator between the vector engine and, and, a, and a discrete GPU card? So the, the discrete GPU card is a SIMT architecture. So it's a single instruction, multiple threads. So the threads are created by CPU. Uh, sorry for the GPU guys if, if, if I'm wrong. So the threads are created by the GPU, and uh, they are uh, executed by uh, CPU, and they're executed by the GPU. And the GPU, we have a streaming multiprocessors, which basically have vector pipes in it, and they vectorize and they uh, do this four cross four parallel uh, multiplication uh, and then get you the results. For the same, we are doing 256 elements parallel and getting into a single instruction. So that's the difference with SIMT. So conclude just one liner is that that we don't do hyper multi, hyper threading or multi threading. We do one thread per core, and it's a pure vector. Do you have examples of just like micro benchmarks that run better on the vector engine versus other architecture, maybe on your website? So uh, once you say about benchmarks, there are two aspects to it. One is the benchmark and another part is that how much data you are processing. So the most of the, mostly the benchmarks we see are mostly our on-memory benchmarks. That's how uh, every architecture achieves the best performance possible. But in the real application, they are not able to do more than 10%. The reason for the same is that the data processing part or the amount of data is missing. So I would say that I would love to share you benchmarks, but uh, uh, also I would like to see that much data processing if that big data is there to process. So because with vectors with such big pipes, it really mean, uh, means the difference that if you bring in such big data. So that's, that's, the, that's how I, I would compare a vector architecture with GPU or CPU not with the existing uh, frame sets where uh, the data is very local to the memory. So what happens is in typical GPU case, it will be offloaded to the GPU and the entire data is if it's on GPU, then the whole PCI bottleneck thing is never exposed, to be honest. Okay. Okay.